Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, The Lessons of Europe. I'm your host, American Mr. Mocha Lover. But we must talk about towing the party line. No one in the White House, or the halls of Congress, could avoid sensing the recent shift in atmosphere relations between the main wings of the Republican Democratic Party are at a low, with accusations of putting personal agendas ahead of party unity and stability abounding behind closed doors and a relationship that was never warm in the first place is cooling further. The latest fault line is the passage of the Social Security Act, which is clearly more important to the president than keeping the Democratic wing of the party content. Great effort has been expended in recruiting every supporter of, in the, of the act in passing and pressuring, badgering, and bullying its detractors into submission. Most of the Democratic lawmakers have fallen in line, seemingly judging that they still have too much to lose if they publicly speak out against the party. For many, Democratic voters, however, take this, this is taken as another instance of the Republican wing happily taking their votes while ignoring their interests feeding a growing sense of disenfranchisement with the party. Also feeding that sense are the firebrands of the MPP far right, who are finding a waiting audience for the condemnations of the socialist in chief and his attacks on the white working man of America. The cost of doing business. The MPP looks better in the southern states. I mean, we weren't going to get them anyways, so we're going to go further divided. You know, it is what it is. It's almost pretty much a solid south and solid Illinois and Iowa. So, kind of weird. Okay, whatever. Cool. As but uh, I did say, like, ask, ask you guys yesterday. So we have our Daring to Dream here. So someone said, like, because of the thing we did with Hawaii, Daring to Dream da downgraded to, like, a ray of hope. But now we're back up to Daring to Dream. And it says we're on the right track here. <clears throat> and there's a strange feeling slowly overtaking the American people. It's not the Malays that have suffered under the past few decades. Something different, something they haven't felt in a long time. They're feeling a little bit of pride. So we got Daring to Dream back again. So, yeah. This is very weird. Actually, uh, is that... Hawaii is... They should be both Republicans, which just makes more sense, since we did get them back. RD support is middling, as well as MPP support is high, which is not good for the upcoming elections, so... <laughs> oh, boy. But anyways, if you like me about the death of Joseph Kennedy, please go right ahead. This happens every campaign if he plays America. And we do have quite a bit of political power buffer right now, which is pretty good for us. It's on the verge of disaster. But American society is united. We technically could increase RD unity, but we got some other things we got to do here first. Decrease uh, image among conservatives. Our duty to the people is finished. Very nice. We lost 50 political power. So, and the Social Security Act would be more effective. Uh, I was also asked whether I think that the military tree for the LBJ was kind of you know worthless or is it? There's is there a point to have it here? It, there is a point because there is a good chance that you can fail all of these tasks, that, even though we haven't failed right now. But there, if you do fail these, like. I think that's why we have the military tree here, because what else are we going to throw in for the focus tree for America if we fail social, you know, and economic reforms? So, we're going to have to pay for all this somehow. Uh, I think I already read this one already. So, if you're talking about that again, please go right ahead. So, we're going to go up, just go straight for that one. Combat water pollution. Environmentalists, environmentalists will like that. I don't mind spending it now. Yeah, state of the Supreme Court. Let's see, what does the state of the Supreme Court? Because we did, I think we went with one conservative and two liberals. Four conservatives and five liberals. There we go. Cool. 47 Republicans, so all we need are like a few Democrats. Actually, yeah, it used to be 45 because we got Hawaii, now it's, uh, you know, 47. Which is actually pretty good. I hope you guys are having a pretty good day. Let's see, image, image of the far right. God, we need to do that so much. So much. All right, and it is almost 1970, so we'll do that one because we can because we can. After that, we're all going to pay for this somehow. Social Security Act. After months of preparation and the creation of inroads to supporters in Congress, the time has come for the proposal in passing the Social Security Act. The act will be a massive undertaking involving the creation of a new bureaucratic institution under the purview of the executive and alterations to income tax codes to fund these institutions. The bill would include several provisions. Chief among them, payments provided to those at the officially recognized retirement age of 65, while also adding health assistance and other benefits. There will also be opposition to its passage, but with enthusiasm for Social Security at its peak, there's no better time for a proposal. Nice. Paying the piper. Operational success, very, very good. <clears throat> uh, the center, I mean, I guess you might as well. It doesn't really matter too much anyway, so... Now that, now that the shape of the Social Security Act is more or less settled, all that remains is to decide upon how to fund it. The projected cost of the programs is substantial, and there's no room to pay for in the current budget. This means President Johnson and his administration will have no other option than to enact new taxes. Ooh, we're going to piss people off. There are two main camps within the administration. First proposes a new tax on income specifically to support Social Security. While a new tax is never going to be a popular proposition, they believe it can make it easier to swallow for the electorate by framing it as an investment in their own retirement. The second camp proposes a much wider tax reform. It contains 
Changes to almost every system of tariffs, levies, or taxes collected by the federal government and the increase in revenue will leave us a lot of extra funding even after Social Security is provided for. The reform is certain to prove very hard to sell to the public, but the increase in funds gives the administration a lot of financial room to act, to act going forward and will all but guarantee we won't have to raise taxes again in the foreseeable future. First option, we need to fund Social Security. Uh, the second option, we need the money. God, I'm going to doom us in the Senate elections. We're definitely not going to get an R or D elected in 1972, are we? We're going to go all the way with LBJ. All the way. Nice. And with this one, voters in the South, Rockies, and the West will disapprove of this. Voters in the North and Steel Belt will approve. We get high taxes. God, I don't like high taxes. We lose 20% political power. Holy bad words. We get more income. We get better pensions, though. I just hope that we can get to the next level of poverty. You know, betterment for everyone. Because that's... Cause Ooh, what do we have? Medium taxes, tax havens, minus 5%. Ooh, high taxes go to minus 20%. Oh, that's really going to hurt us. Uh, ooh, but 12.25%, that's not bad. 15, and they'll go down to 10, 15%, which isn't a much bigger jump, but it'll help with war support, recruitable population factor, factory output, construction speed, monthly population goes down, taxable population factor, 10% more, more, more research speed, and income rate. Oh, yeah. Income rate factor goes up by 20% more. So, operational success, very good. Oh, oh, our work is never done. They'll look a little better. We'll probably want to do that one. Increase minimum benefits. Ooh. Reduces support amongst voters in more conservative states. Goes further divided. Some Democrats will vote to the defect of the NPP. Universal health care. Well, let's do the, our work is never done. Social Security has finally passed and ensured that Americans can comfortably retire without facing the threats of poverty. However, there are much greater plans to pursue in order to fulfill the great society that President LBJ has envisioned for the United States, and we must remain diligent moving forward. There are still left many, uh, many left unprotected and uninsured by the act, including younger individuals, who will still suffer from the worst effects of poverty. Greater programs will have to be created and more initiatives taken if we hope to build a society where no one lives without a safety net. Oh boy. Oh boy. I want to reflect is, oh, look at that. Very strong, very strong, very strong, very strong environment. We're just lacking in the environment. We'll get everything done, hopefully, by the end of the election season for this one. We're just going to just decimate the Republican Party. I just, it's going to be so bad for us. But the NPPC is supportive. Mr. President, there is a silver lining as the Republican Democratic Party self-destructs around us over the Great Society program. The standard faction of the NPP has proved to be a strong ally, even as the conservative Democrats flee to the NPP far right. As Republicans who are left in the RD lean more progressive, we're actually lining up with the NPP Center on many social and economic issues, which should help make the Great Society legislation easier to pass and promote. Of course, there are going to be issues with working with the NPP Center. They are much more established leftists and progressive than most Republicans, so the future proposals will lean even more towards them and bolster their own support in future elections. There are even some Democrats calling you the first NPP president as we continue to work with them. Politics. I was always made for strange bedfellows, and working with some of the folks on the other side of the aisle as well is, well, strange and discomforting at times. But at least working with Michael Harrington and Scoop Jackson is a lot easier, more pleasant, and less migraine-inducing than with Barry Goldwater or Wallace Bennett. Wallace Bennett, yeah. This will undoubtedly help us get to the Great Society pushed through the legislative branch much easier, though in the end it may just destroy the RDs altogether. First MPP president, at least it wasn't Henry Jackson. And let's see, it seems like we can do something else here. Ah, intelligence, that's fine. Doesn't really matter too much for us at all. Can we strengthen? Yep, we can. I wonder, can I save the RDs? Actually, we did, I missed this one earlier. We can still reassure the party, but we don't have time for that right now. Gain support? Like, is it worth spending 100 political power right now of increasing unity between us? Hmm. Oh, and we're going to fight. vote for R&D. Yeah. I mean, the last time we tried this, it was so bad. The East Coast. Oh, my goodness. It's all a toss-up. <laughs> Safe NPP. Safe NPP. I guess this is the South. Oh, goodness. Oh, it's, oh this is going to... Oh, we're going to die. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. Look at... Tilt NPP. Tilt NPP. Tilt NPP. Getting even Hawaii wasn't enough for us to have a secure next election. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, no. This is not good. That's not good. Oh, my goodness. Well, oh, man. How, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pass all this then. Improve civil rights? Yeah. Southern conservatives are increasingly radicalizing against our policies. The Dr. Core. Re reduce support amongst conservative states. Grow further divided. Massive burdens. Um, wow, minus 200 political power. Yeah, we can't spend any political power then. That's fine. Crisis in Nanjing. Increase minimum benefits. 
Our current benefit program is a welcome reprieve for the poor, but for the most absolutely worst off, even these payments are not enough. If we were to lift all Americans out of poverty and damnation, we must increase our payments to the poor recipients of welfare. Only by giving them the help they need can these people finally be brought out of the poverty trap. Work is never done. God, we're going to be just destroyed in the next election. Oh my goodness. But, I mean, we are united, so we'll see what happens. Oh, let's fill his vacancy. It was going to piss more people off because we are going to uh, put in a liberal Supreme Court justice. Mm, nobody left behind. I do want to do that one, too, because the African-American voters love us. They love us. I mean, they're only, like, what, like 10%, 15% of the population, so it's not really, you know, couldn't help us out that much, but we'll do the best we can. We need increased minimum benefits. Yeah. A safety net, growing socialism. Oh, yeah, we got to keep, we got to. Keep spending for military spending because that, without that, we're just kind of screwed for civil civilian spending. Nobody left behind though. There's no doubt that we've done great work. In our years running in the country, our administration has made large strides in improving the life of the average American. We reform education, engineered social security, and even widened access to proper medical care. The Great Society program has reached out and made America a better place, and yet we can still even make it even better. Oh wow, Order 44 actually fired. Wow, the Great Society program was formed to help all Americans, regardless of creed, gender, or race. The time has come to begin reaching out to the disadvantaged within a country. <clears throat> we'll begin working on legislation that will allow minorities, women, and all those discriminated against the opportunity to seek better jobs, better education. Regardless of how some might feel, we will not let any American get left behind on our path towards the future. We are just digging our own hole here, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I mean, we can make the environmentals like this, but we gotta save every single scrounge of pee, pee Oh, that's not good. Not good. Approve civil rights? I mean, I think we're pretty good on civil rights already, but, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Neither race nor class. Ooh, get more PP that way. The right to liberty. The voters in Steel Belt and North will approve this. Support will grow. increase. Oh, the MPP grows further divided. Choosing a score is name If you like about that, please go ahead. Let's go with the level justice. A safety net. Individuals and businesses that are most financially at risk can easily be pushed over the edge by sudden calamity or monetary setback. We must ensure that these people have access to a financial safety net, which means of shielding them from the worst impacts of a sudden and unexpected event uh, expense. This can be achieved by introducing legislation to improve the availability and quality of savings accounts and insurance so that our people might always have some money to fall back on. Ooh, actually, hmm. We'll go do something else instead, but a judicial shakeup. Um, in these uncertain times for America, radical change is needed. We can no longer justify existing in a state of business as usual, and so our administration has made the controversial decision to grant their Supreme Court nominations to certain individuals who are more than likely to see things from our point of view. Reaction to our move has been mixed. More diehard supporters have praised our commitment to fulfilling our promises, but responses from most other Americans have been that of suspicion at best, outrage at worst. With many newspapers sharply criticizing an erosion of the separation of powers, our approval ratings have been dropped sharply amongst many moderate voters. Their trust will be very difficult to win back, if at all possible. Change is necessary no matter the price. Alright everyone, so what I was thinking was that, okay, so it looks like we don't really need to do these too much, or, you know, I'm just looking for focuses that require us to have a majority in Congress for us to pass stuff, which includes the right to liberty, so we can secure majority of votes in Congress for this bill as well as the right to life, and this one, actually, it looks like we can kind of ignore the center path for now. So we need to do this side, then this side, and then we'll be good, hopefully, because we just gotta keep an eye on the focus prerequisites. This focus will cancel if the requirements are not met, which means we can secure a vote, majority of votes for Congress in the bill. Uh, we might be able to get this done. I don't think we'll be able to get all this stuff done right now. Ooh, this is not gonna be good. Our burdens are massive, which we will hopefully do next, but neither race nor class. We've already done much to bring equality equality to America, but there still remains an issue to be dealt with. While our people are no longer legally burdened by race, many minorities are still greatly disadvantaged by the economic conditions they face as a result of years of neglect and persecution. If we're to truly free the people from the shackles of the past, we must amend our existing civil rights legislation to also provide concrete legal protections to the economically disadvantaged. We must ensure that all people, no matter their race, their color, or their stature in life are treated with respect and dignity. Growing Socialism to some of our detractors, measures taken to implement the Great Society border on socialism yet to the MPPL. This is a good thing, and moreover, they're the ones responsible for putting it by putting pressure on the Johnson presidency to actually enact laws which will help the working class. Not very convincing, but the left is taking the credit anyway and the piggybacking on our success to grow their own movement. Is there really a place for socialism in America? Political power, stability, and MPPL, MPPL starts growing in popularity? I hope it does so we can get more things passed. That's the only reason why we want it here. <laughs> we got a lot of political power, though. And, uh, yeah, we're looking good. Oh, I'm going to be feeling so bad about this soon. Oh, man. 
if we keep it like 30, 30 Republicans, that'd be... I hope we get KP at least 30, but there's no guarantee, but the right to liberty. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, the Declaration of Independence. This was a promise that America was founded upon, though unfortunately until now has been a promise denied to a significant number of our citizenry now. We have ensured that all may be free, all Americans ha might live unbound by both law and poverty. All men, be they black or white, rich or poor, young or old, might now truly be placed on even footing from which they may work together to make America the best. It can possibly be. Ah, thank goodness, we actually have another decrease in poverty. A toaster economist, if you like to read about that, please go ahead. At least, you know, it's getting better. It's definitely getting better. And actually, I would like to see... Okay, so we, we were at like 12 point something here. Now we're 5.43, so we probably won't get another boost in that any later on, but... Nice, now that's looking not too bad. That's not bad. Oh, man. I mean, I don't think improving our relations with or making the environmentals like us more will really help us out. They already probably will vote for us, so the right to liberty. Good RD campaign. That's good to hear. Very, very good. We got a lot of PP now. Look at that. Oh, only 0.91 a day. Come on, man. Why? We already have boosted civilian spending, but the progressives are mobilizing. Mr. President, the most recent poll is in. Here, if you take a look, yep, that's right. That is in a typo. Yaki support has more than double their previous numbers. I know it's not a lot in the big scheme, but there's still a tiny sliver of the electorate, but you can still, and we can still point to the general approval of the great society, but that right there should be worrying. Just a small number can make or break elections. Just a few thousand votes in the right state can make all the difference. Oh, yes, and the other number. The MPPL is also getting a boost, too, and a fairly big one. As the rhetoric of, is ratcheting up, both opposed and in favor, those on the far left are seeing increased support as well, see, seeking to get the Great Society to be even stronger and farther reaching. They're taking support from both the Republicans and even our allies in the NPP Center. I really don't know what else to tell you. We're seeing the breakdown of the two-party system as we've known it for the past two decades right in front of our eyes. The Democrats have defected, we are in bed with Harrington, and the nutcases on the extremes of the spectrum are looking better and better. Maybe we're pushing us too far? I need a drink. America is really tired of our agenda. Oh well. You get who you vote for, right? You get who you vote for. And I haven't done anything off screen to make us, like, like be even more successful yet, so. Which I might have to do in this episode just because it's not great. But, equality for all? It's been a stain on America's founding vision from the start. The outcome of the United States original sin, what Africans Americans have been seen as inferior to the white man. Recent events in the South where police officers have brutally assaulted a black man, which made the news across the nation, have pushed President LBJ and his allies in Congress to start putting together a program that will change the balance to give racially oppressed minorities the rights that the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution legally gives them, but for far too long that's been ignored. This program would encourage businesses, academia, the civil service, and others to hire more African Americans, as well as Indians, Latinos, Asians, and other minority groups to be more representative representatives of the population as a whole. Of course, there are some that strongly disagree, claiming that the black man is already equal in law, and that civil rights has gone too far, Th that this is as unyet named program would make blacks more powerful than whites. The opposition's coalesced around Francis Park Parker Yaki and his right-wing supporters in the NPP, which has seen a boost in support and polls lately. The scales are only beginning being tipped to make it more equal. Support will increase even more. But that's kind of what you say, because we bring up Yaki here, but would the president really know about Yaki? Like, that's my, like kind of deal like we know about Yaki but what like the president who's surrounded by other people what he even you know like oh who's this Yaki guy you know like it's just one dude out of everyone else so what I mean for our sakes it's important for us to know but what they really know but New England's looking a little better now and the East Coast is looking a little better as well so let's go back to New England all right right to Liberty and the Medicare and Medicaid expansion. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, no. We just saw that. I wonder when that was going to fire again. Good. <clears throat> and we can secure majority of votes in Congress for this bill. Medicare and Medicaid are the flagship programs of the larger to reform the na our nation's health care, and they've proven invaluable for the coverage of retired, disabled, and financially struggling Americans. In this new age of broad health care coverage, however, these programs are both in dire need of an update. As the strain on our bureaucracy increases, we'll need to expand Medicare and Medicaid to accommodate the needs of a growing body of recipients now. Millions rely on publicly funded insurance programs for the coverage and a degree of revitalization is necessary to manage the burden. Signs. Oh, good. That's not good. At least we get more political power that way. A man stands up on a soapbox in a busy city square. His yelling is often rambling and incoherent, but anyone who would bother to listen can get the gist. America is under siege, he says, not by fascism or imperialism, but by liberalism. These treasonous low lives seek to destroy America from within their, with their low moral character, their cowardice in the face of foreign aggression, and their tolerance of the black man and the Jew. Most passerbys pay him no heed, however. The small audience that does listen has grown slowly larger over the past few weeks. 
A black woman hums a gentle tune as she browses a store for a family's evening meal. Suddenly, a white man approaches her. He accosts her, telling her that her kind have no place in the store, spitting and addressing her with a slur. She stands her ground and he attempts to assault her before he is dragged out, kicking and screaming obscenities by the store security. The woman has once hoped that things could be better, but the racists have been more brazen than ever lately. She goes back to her shopping, her tune silenced. A pair of right NPP senators sit at lunch in the Drexen Building cafeteria. The conversation begins innocently. Idle comments on traffic and the weather and the elder senator's buxom new secretary. Then one begins to commiserate on the party's changing course, longing for the days when they could openly stand for true white American values. The other smiles and tells him that one day they might be able to again. He has been having some talks with the Yaki's people lately, and the time may come soon again where they can come out into the open. To the untrained eye, all is well in America, but for those who know where to look, the signs are all there. There is a darkness building in this country, and those who would welcome it grow more and more bold. Their influence is still small, and things will carry on as they are for now, but how long will it last? The specter of hate lurks. Very cool. Very cool. God, I, you know, if there was TNO2 in the game already, that actually be really cool to see, like, uh, what would happen. Like, basically, America might, will probably fall into civil war or something like that. And TNO2, or the chance of it to falling into civil war would probably be, probably there. We'll put it like that. Polls, oh, crud. I, I don't even want to look at the polls. They're bad. They're bad for us. <clears throat> nope. Uh, split us up. Expenses rise sharply. Uh, let's do that one then. I don't mind the Democrats defecting from us. Our plans for a new healthcare system will need funding, and if we are to win people over, we must prove that such a plan is feasible. We'll get our economic advisors working on drawing up some budgets and show our critics that we can make this still work. As the most economically sound nation on the planet, it shouldn't be too difficult to gather the necessary money. We'll still need to convince people that it is a worthwhile use of funds. Good, and... Ah, oh, great campaign! Good! Excellent campaign! I love it! And... Oh, crap! No! 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 I forgot about the stupid oil crisis! Why? We were doing so well for our society. Oh, it's gonna, oh, it's gonna lock, lock us out. No, don't. Oh, we don't have time for this. No, it's an election year. <laughs> no. <laughs> we gotta at least get that one done first. Come on, come on. You gotta get this done first. Um, if you like to read about that, please go with the machine falters. Please go right ahead. It just happens every campaign, so not really interested in doing that, reading it. So the president wonders as party people do. That actually might be okay for us, but god dang it. See, we're locked out of it. Ah, oil crisis. <sighs> um, is it here? Hold on. Let's let's really love this. Ah, there it is. Running on flames. Um, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Oh my God, it's gonna. Oh God, we're not gonna be able to do any more stuff. God dang it. Disaster averted. I mean, this is nice to get more you know political power, I guess. Oh, we're gonna lose political power. But oh, we're gonna lose even more political power. Are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? We've actually built up all the cities again. Come on, why? Into the open? Oh, we can read about that one, though. Well, 47 billion. Wow, that's pretty bad. That is pretty darn bad. Not gonna lie. New England is looking a little better. The East Coast, we gotta go with the East Coast again. Into the open. The streets of Birmingham. Echo once more with the cries of unrest. There is no mere protest, but a rally. It is organized and coordinated, and its members are filled with a feverish passion. The placards bear slogans of hatred, pictures of Yaki and even Hitler, and calls for liberal and progressive politicians to be lynched. They're greeted with a band of counter-protesters, and soon the city echoes with screams of obscenity and fury. Soon, both crowds have grown too large and unruly for the police to control, and the violence begins. The police gather in the remains of the salon. According to the owners, the thugs had come during the night and set their place alight, shouting racist obscenities as they did so. The former employees, all African Americans, weep at the loss of their livelihoods. This is the fifth report of arson in a month, including two other black-owned businesses, the office of the R.D. back mayor, and a Jewish family's residence. No evidence of the culprits is found, and the police leave with no further inquiries. More than one of them quietly smirks as they go. In a conference room in Washington, the Yaquiites meet. Their fundraising efforts have yielded more fruit than ever before. For the first time, they begin to talk of campaigning, of distributing media to the public, and pushing for their members to speak at MPP events. The mood is cheerful, even if they do not quite have the influence yet to begin pushing their agenda. Every man in the room can feel the change in the air. Their time may be finally coming. The cracks are beginning to show, and from those cracks pour the re forces of reaction all across the country. These ideas are beginning to take root, and no longer are those who hold them afraid to hide it. Those who hope that the rise of extreme thought was a passing phase grow increasingly nervous, and it remains to be seen how much further such ideology will spread. No more hiding. Wow, we're growing Yaki support by quite a bit. I like it. Cool. We have so much PP though. Like, I don't mind spending people. You know what? We got 100 PP. I'm going to risk it. There's not that many Democrats, but... Um, actually, are we shattered on the verge of disaster? You know, we'll do it once. We'll do it once. You know what? We got the PP for it. There you go. We should be okay for a while then, right? Should be? Maybe not? Okay. Uh, why do we have to have this stupid little thing here? 
I don't want to lose political power. Oh, that's good. They run a lackluster campaign. We'll do this one. Everything's bigger in Texas, because that's because that's actually the Texas slogan. At least when I used to live there, which probably still exists, but you know, it's been a while since I've been down to Texas. Oh, we did that one already. Get guns. Uh, can we help out in Iraq? Actually, can we send volunteers? No, I don't think we can. That's okay though. All right, running on fumes. Everything's bigger in Texas. God. Well, I, I tried my best, guys. Uh, we literally didn't do any other focus except for the Great Society stuff. Literally. That's the only stuff we have done. And we just don't have enough time to get, you know, to get down all the way to the bottom. The Earth Bleeds? Oh, if you want to bet that one, please go ahead. This is about the Middle East and the oil crisis. The wheels of ages turn once more. Oh my gosh! Whoa! Polls are updated. We lose so much political power! What the heck? Oh my goodness. I'm glad we kept up a, a good little reservoir of PP for us. We still have 200, which is great. Don't get me wrong, that's still great. So, and but we can still strengthen pro-American sentiment, which is nice. Good. It's still tell. Oh, we might actually keep some uh, Republicans here. We have so many Republicans getting potentially primaried out. Foreign capital. Uh, subsidizing your companies will have some effect in countering economic collapse. But for more lasting support, we should look into foreign capital. New to nations like Europe and like Sweden and Switzerland are going are beginning to invest in our companies, so it's time to give them the go ahead. Let the foreign money flow and get our economy back on track. Welcome financial ambassadors. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Oh man. Alright, so we gotta get, wait for this. And the Rockies, yeah, leaning towards these guys, that's not good. Oh man, it's it's running a little slowly. Come on, Iraq, can you just kill each other off for now? Setting price. Let's do setting price because I don't want to lose any more PP because we're already below one a day. We're po oh my god, 0.27. Holy crap! Let's do Great Lakes. Great Lakes. Operation success. Great. Okay, that's good. That's good. Holy bad words. The oil crisis minus 20%. High taxes hurts us as well. Oh my god. Why? The CI USA CIA Tech Boot 2 bonus plus 1%. I mean, that's nice. Uh, uh, they run a good campaign in the Rockies, but still. <sighs> that sucks. That sucks so much. Can we improve poverty at all? How's our professionalism looking? 105. We got... Oh! Uh, industrial expertise might be going up. Good. Uh, nothing for equipment. Nothing for agriculture. Uh, no, not too much there. Alright, not too bad. Not too bad. Federal Energy Office. Why not? Capitals is Commodities. I kind of hope that this whole oil crisis gets reworked eventually as well. It, it makes sense for what it is right now. <clears throat> but in the future, I hope there's like something more, more reactions you can do to it. Like more smaller little adjustments you can make to lessen the impact on the oil crisis. But that's just me, maybe. Capital is commodities. Wall Street is the heart of American economy. And today, it's beating harder than ever. Turmoil erupted on the trading floor after a plan to set prices and oil became public. And what can only be described as mass hysteria ensued as traders followed the trail of current events to the flow of oil or the lack thereof. In the, or the crisis in the Middle East, realizing the way the wind was blowing. <clears throat> Thankfully, it proved to be a minor hiccup, and the chaos on the trading floor quickly died down. Despite the initial hullabaloo, setting prices and oils allowed us to maintain control of Wall Street and keep the markets relatively stable, averting the economic disaster many of our advisors were certain was imminent. Of course, we've made a lot of people angry. Commodities traders in particular are unsurprisingly furious, but the anger of a gang of hair-gelled, smooth-talking champagne drinkers is a small price to pay for to avoid economic meltdown. Oh, good campaign. Good. Good. RDs are looking are doing so much better than they used to right now. So much better. Hopefully, they've learned a thing or two so they can do well. Polls are updated. All right. I'll still do an East Coast. It's a toss-up. East Coast, New England. East Coast, New England, or the Great Lakes, actually. East Coast, New... Oh, no, no. Without doing that, we get 0.37. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. 0.42. That's not too bad. 65 billion. I thought it was supposed to get better. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy bad words. Oh, my goodness. Uh, New England. Leaning towards MPP. Okay. All right. And we'll do synthetic alternatives. The effects of the oil crisses will go down. I don't want to hurt PP anymore. Synthetic alternative. Please go ahead if you'd like to read that. Oh, man. Oh, mama. 65 billion. Civilian spending. Oh, it's so bad. 200 billion. Um, honestly, it's, I guess, yeah, that makes sense because the cost is so high for civilian spending. I, I might, I don't know. I'm not an economist. Don't take advice from me. But, uh, oh, oh, that's not good. But, uh, maybe it should be under other expenditures. Oh, no. Oh, no. The time has come here. 
Oh god, oh god, oh god. We went from... Okay, we kept 31. Wow, we are... Holy crap! 66 far-right senators? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I said at least keep 30 would be nice. And we did. So, oh... God, 66. Oh, that's painful. That is painful. Oh my goodness. Can we... Oh no. Oh no. Can we at least keep doing some of this? All is well is not well. Oh, we can't secure majority votes in Congress. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I don't know if we can get to this then. Hmm. We might... Oh no, 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 no. People were saying that I, I should just give myself more political power so that, uh... We can get everything done. Uh, I don't know. The, oh my goodness. We lost. How many seats? 16. The far right is so strong now. We were united too. There's only 30, 67 of them. Acquire boats. Call a small favor from a far right senator and two of his friends. Oh god. Mm. So here's the plan. Uh, let me see. Oh, we can do that. We can wait. Do, 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 do. We can redo that. Mm. Mm hmm. All right. So, uh, the verge of disaster. Oh my God. Senate is election. Oh my gosh. Well, now we can do this again. God dang it. This is going to become like a Yaki run or something here, man. God, I hate the stupid oil crisis. Disaster averted. We get more political power, but at what point does this even matter? Hold on, so, with this one, can we keep doing this one? Working toward on the upcoming bill, we need more votes, and Republicans' votes are not enough. Luckily, we know of a few Democrats and Senator MPP senators who might be supportive of cause. I mean, we might be able to do that. I'm probably going to do things off-screen to make sure that we can actually maybe do well with that stuff, regardless, maybe? We'll definitely have to wait and see, just... Uh... Hmm... Well, there's only one senator and 66 far right senators. <sighs> so American side is supposed to be united. God dang it. Mm. Obviously, they'll vote for us. So, but oh my goodness, looking to the Arabian Peninsula. I feel like you're about that. Please go right ahead. Uh, focus your change. I don't really care about this. Let's see, Pan Arabs and Cairo. Probably Riyadh. That's that's an, probably more of an American thing to do. Um, we could probably do that stuff, but. Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, God dang it. Uh, a radical proposal. Uh, the Doctor Corps. Inspired by the Teacher's Corps, we will also establish a so-called Doctor's Corps. Like their educational counterparts, the men and women of the Doctor Corps will take part in outreach programs to the deprived areas, filling in the gaps of local health care provision, and giving cheap treatments to the poorest who need it. Aspiring doctors fresh out of college can readily seek internship in the program to gain valuable experience and to give back to the communities, though they would be led by qualified professionals whose work could be subsidized by us. A momentary emblemism. Let's see. Okay, so this is about civil the Middle East and the CIA and not CIA, but the oil crisis. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. All right. Yeah, that really didn't do much, too, anything for us. God dang it. Oh my goodness, we were. Yeah, we got enough PP for now. Um, cut that down a little bit more. That doesn't help us that much, honestly, at all. So, operational success is good. I'm just uh, daring to dream. We did so well so far. God dang the far right. I wasn't even trying to get Yaki this time. <clears throat> oh, I still like myself. They better still like us. God dang. Only Kansas likes us. The Dakotas. Parts of New England. That's it. Even all of California left us. Wow. Just. Wow. That's all I can say. I mean, I don't think there's anything we could have done to do that anyways, but hypothetical budget drafts. Our plans for a new healthcare system will need funding, and if we're to win people over, we must prove that such a plan is feasible. We'll get our economic advisors working on drawing up more budgets, or some budgets, and show our critics that we can make this work. As the most economically sound nation on the planet, it shouldn't be too difficult to gather up the necessary money. We'll still need to convince people that this is a worthwhile use of funds. Acquire votes? Can we get even more, maybe? We might, if we keep doing this, we might be able to still get the votes needed. Maybe? <laughs> Maybe? God dang Senate. Oh my goodness. A radical proposal. Um, oh, let's do the night vision first. I mean, either, it doesn't even matter at this point, but we'll do it anyways. Happy 1971, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. But, 
a radical proposal. Now that we've laid down the necessary groundwork and draw up our plans, it's time to formally draft a bill. The creation of a government-funded national standard of health care has never been, attempt been attempted before in the U.S., and naturally our skeptics are vocal and numerous. We need to fight our case hard all the way through to the end using all the evidence and models we've established to argue our point. It'd be difficult, and given the gravity of our task, we must brace for disappointment. If we're successful, however, we could usher in a whole new era of health and well-being for all Americans. Nice. Um, 70. Cool. There you go. Anything over there? Nope. All right. So hopefully we can... I don't think we can encourage more people from the far right to, you know, help us out with our goals here. Jesus Christ. You know, it's weird, because we have more... So many far right senators. I mean, it gets us split between, you know, Wallace and Yaki, but still. It's fine. Working on healthcare. I'll see how long we can work on it. But rumors and leaks have been coming from the administration that working to work towards a budget for a universal health care plan is currently ongoing. While the press secretary and the president himself won't say so officially, and speculation is growing in Washington and around the country that soon the U.S. will join virtually every other industrialized nation on the planet for a full and comprehensive Medicare a medical insurance plan. While well, there's still a long way to go before the plan will be presented to the American people, and to convince the majority that it's in their best interest, the left wing of the National Progressive Party's coalition is already capitalizing on this outcome, claiming that universal health care is thanks almost entirely to their pushing and continued support. The MPPL has seen their support increase across the nation already. We haven't finished putting it. We haven't finished putting it together yet. We lose political power, but the, for us, it doesn't matter at this point. The right to life. No one has a right to life. Uh, well, so, well, I'm going to do maybe some, some messy things off screen to see what I can do about that, but our burdens are massive. At times, it might seem any effort to provide a better life for all is futile. America, the USA is a nation of nearly 200 million people. No matter how many times we, how many we help, there will always be some who fall through the cracks. Our system is good and noble, but we must not grow complacent. There are always more people who need some help to realize their fullest potential. President Johnson ponders this and wonders what can be done to ensure that the system continues to do its best for our people. Questioning the dream. <clears throat> The poor man drives home from his daily grind at the auto factory. His next payday is weeks away, and he wonders if he'll be able to eat until then. He questions why he can barely afford the necessities while he is rude, lazy supervisor owns a second car in a vacation home in Florida. Commiserating his lot in life, he turns on the radio, another man speaks. His voice loud and commanding, he decries a state of America that squeezes the worker dry while funneling his wealth towards the upper classes. He calls for the wealth that belongs to the people to return to the people. The poor man listens to his word intently, all the way back home. A university student pours over her essay on American history, knowing that her professor will scold her for how unpatriotic it is. As a girl, she believes that her nation was the greatest in the world, but after reading what scarce few books she could find about the history of native genocide and the Red Scare and the legacy of Jim Crow, she found it hard to feel any sense of pride anymore. She spies a leaflet pinned to a corkboard on the wall. It advertises a student activist group claiming to preach the real sordid history of America. After some musing, she sets out to attend his first meeting. The black man had been politely turned away from some offices or actively laughed out of the door out of others. Finally he finds himself finds someone who will take him seriously. The white man greets him warmly and asks him about his previous experience. He talks about his days as a lawyer, primarily defending civil rights act activists and the poor and downtrodden, and the official listens to him patiently. After a lengthy interview, both are smiling the left MPP is coming into the light and a black lawyer and defender on civil rights is exactly the type of person they'd like to put on the ballot. Something is changing in America. The idea of the American dream no longer holds the luster it once did, and anger is beginning to mount. Decades of broken promises are finally catching up to this country, and unless something changes, the people may well turn to ideas once considered anathema. The system begins to crack. Everyone is splitting apart, and it's always fun to see more radicalization, except when it hurts the Senate. Gosh dang, Senators. Why do you do this to us? Why? We'll sway some MPP supporters. Well, that's nice. Well, the MPP senator doesn't even matter. They literally have one senator. Reluctant Republicans, while our administration is only acting in the best interest of American people, we seem to have gone too far with some of our within our own party. A number of Republicans have publicly distanced themselves from some of our most recent measures, leading to a decline in support from the president as a segment of the electorate. Unfortunately, this weakens our ability to implement the change America needs. Ah, uh, bad word. Um. It uh, feels like this is not going to go very well for us. Oh, well, we'll keep trying this, so... We'll see what we can do. Yeah, uh... Oh, wait. Was this... How about Germany? I think it was a German one, yeah. Or the far right. Or whatever. Our burdens are massive. Oh, advanced APCs. Yes, please. We do have quite a few factories, though. Advanced APCs. We'll grab some of that. No. Um... Support companies. Why not? We love support companies here. Our troubles are many. 
It is the nature of history that mankind must face endless struggle. Across both the Atlantic and the Pacific, billions of people live under unimaginable cruelty, a life more bleak and painful than that of even the worst off America. We face down annihilation every day, living in the hopes that cool heads will prevail even the most aggressive of nations. In times such as these, it can seem that we can do nothing well. Anything we do will not be enough. Sitting in the Oval Office, President LBJ contemplates the nature of the world, and if what we are doing can hold a candle to the darkness. <laughs> wow, we lose even more stability? And more decisions for our work is never done? And the OFN grows even more divided? Why does it grow even more divided? Trouble, rumblings of change. <clears throat> the clan rallies, as often they do. Through the streets of a southern town, the locals are amenable to them, furious as they are at being forced to live alongside blacks, and so they march confidently and proudly as they go. Suddenly, they find themselves faced with another crowd. A wash of all races have gathered to stand against the clan's marchers. Many of them have come in from out of town in an unprecedented level of organized resistance. Soon, violence breaks out between the two sides, and the clan are forced to retreat. A gaggle of union representatives stood across from the factory boss. Once, the police would have quickly dispersed the striking workers outside, like they did at Mount Blair, or Blair Mountain. Now, with the union membership soaring, the boss sits and quietly sees as he reads their list of demands. He's darned if he lets them strike go, the strikes go on any longer, but fulfilling their demands would ruin him in the long run. The union reps sit and smile, knowing that he has no choice, confident that they finally have the strength to effect real change. There's a power in the union once more. The lone voice... The once lone voice of the left MPP meets with the most radical of the center in Washington. The left argues that they've done all they can by playing nice and adhering to the system. America is ready for real change and it's time to push and push hard. For the first time, once more moderates are amenable to their argument. A decision is made, more funding is allocated to the left, and those within the center who are tired of getting nowhere agree to help the radicals with whatever they need. A time of beer questioning is over. More and more people are beginning to take direct action against what they perceive as injustice and indignity in the country, and they're beginning to push towards the halls of power. Unless the establishment can offer up a meaningful solution to the problems faced by the American people, they'll continue to turn towards those with fire in their hearts. Silent no more? Ah, you gotta love increased radicalization. Push it, push it, push it. Except for the Senate, like I always say. Except for the Senate, please. Um, diminished image of the Senate. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The left... <clears throat> Escort, why is it growing faster than Yaki? That doesn't make any sense. How is the left growing faster than Yaki's supporters here? That that doesn't make any sense to me. Because we're doing things that, that are, you know, that would push the Yakiites to be more, or, you know, the Democratic, the authoritarian Democrats to be more extreme. But to the left? I mean, I'm not sure that really makes a lot of sense, but our troubles are many. Cool. Oh, calling the Democrats. Oh, look at this. Our work is never done. The end draws near for the Great Society. Medicare, food stamps, Social Security, and all these candles have had their wicks lit. But now it's time for the flames to be calmed as we move on. However, we never will it be forgotten by the Republican Party. Our work is, is never done. More unified? Ease our expenses? Now we can do this? Oh, my goodness. Oh, grow more unified? This will encourage more Democrats to vote in 1972. Um, at this point, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. We might get more PP if we do this. The OFN grows a little more united, though. Let's take a look here. That's still high, so maybe we can push it over, maybe? Maybe push it to, you know, a little even higher than that? Maybe not. Oh, and there goes the Shah of Iran. But our virtues are great. <clears throat> there will always be darkness, but there also must be always be light. The USA is a land of the free, the home of the brave, a place of endless opportunity where all men may freely pursue their own betterment in the name of the American dream. As long as our values are maintained, the light of liberty will shine on, and the hope of freedom and justice will never perish. That we try to make our world better, even against the darkness, darkest stress we have ever faced, proves that there is goodness in men, and President Johnson comforts, him, comforts himself in the soul that we can always count on the spirit of America to lead humanity to a better future. So, why does the OFN become more unified? Like, yeah, we are doing great, but what is the reasoning behind that? And the Republicans and Democrats win a huge coup? Wait, we're cooing someone? We're cooing... What? This seems a little out of place. I don't know. This just seems a little out of the blue. At least in my opinion. I could be wrong about this, but... It just seems a little out of place for that. On the verge of disaster? You know, that's fine. Whatever. We're going to keep this one open just so we can see if we can... Hopefully get some more votes, Maybe? And this one actually closed out for now since nothing else has really changed here. Operational success. Great, great, great. And strength of pro-American business sentiment. I love that. If you just throw money at something, it just gets better for us. I love that. And I'm waiting for these guys to explode as well, so. Oh, and it is lagging so hard. The Iran and Civil War. If you'd like, like to read about that, please go right ahead. Please don't make us... Oh. Don't cancel this focus, please. We don't care about Iran for now. We might help them out, but it's fine. Whatever. Send volunteers? I don't want to send... I want to send volunteers, but I don't want to spend PP for this. Can we send anybody at all? No? Nope. Well, it is what it is. You know. I'd love to send volunteers, but we don't have the PP for it. Oh, well. 
Infantry anti tank, very nice. It is almost 72, but support companies. There you go. Um, these are expenses. Operation. Hey, good, nice. Protect American businesses, that's fine. All right, trouble with me. Oh, look at that. Downplay the progressive role. Already look a little better. Barbie will go better, but at this point, it's too late. It's just too late for that. Like, I don't know. But our virtues are great. You get a lot more political power, which is nice because of that. But at this point, it's too late, man. It's too late. I'd love to send volunteers. I don't think that's going to help us. That's not going to help us do anything here. Plug the gaps in welfare. I'd like to do that one, too. That national progressive role. Um, encourage more Democrats to vote. Our expenses will decrease. Grow more lower unified. I mean, there's only, what, two Democrats? So, the Democrats don't even matter anymore, I guess. I don't mind doing poverty. How, how are we doing for poverty now? Uh, we're at... Ooh, we probably won't be able to get that done anyway, so... Oh, acquire more votes in the Senate. How many times can we do this? Can we do this enough times we can actually get this one passed? Darn it, we can't. <laughs> Not yet. Hey, we got better industrial expertise, so if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Nice. So just in case, I'm going to do some messy things off screen about the right to life. In a land of great wealth, families must not live in hopeless poverty. In a land rich in harvest, children must not go hungry. In a land of healing miracles, neighbors must not suffer and die un untended. In a great land of learning and scholars, the young people must be taught to read and write. President LBJ, inaugural address. With a healthcare plan secured, another pillar of our great society is falling into place. No longer will our people be left out of pocket when they need to help the help the most. The right to life is a sacros sacrosanct and must be granted to all Americans no matter the cost. As a total overhaul of our health service gets under Way. America can begin to reap the benefits. It'll take a while before things are at a maximum operational capacity, but we can soon expect a massive increase in the quality of public health if we can secure enough votes. So I'm going to go ahead and explore a few things off screen to see if we can actually get that done. All right, everyone. So we're back, kind of back in time in 1970, but I still could not get enough senators. Even with using cons commands, and which I didn't get any more PP, but just using cons commands for like decisions about no checks and stuff like that. The best we can do, literally the best you can do. Is 42 Republican senators and two Democrats. So, I've tried a whole bunch of different things. I've been looking up guys. I spent over an hour or two trying to look up cheats or using ways to use console command to get more senators, and it is not possible, which is incredibly disappointing. So, we're gonna have to do uh, some console commands to get some of the stuff done. But we'll probably do that in the next episode, maybe. So, I even tried. We went down Social Security. I did everything like normal. But I went down our work server. I beeline down here. Got our virtues, our great first. And then went back and got Medicare and Medicaid expansion for more support for the North and Steel Belt. I actually even finished off some of uh, the, you know, the Middle East oil crisis. I've tried different routes by going down here and, like, just letting time go on so that we don't piss off the Southern and... The Southern voters, the Rocky voters, and Western voters. So, realistically, um, we can't... You can't do this. You can't get all the way through here without cheating, so... Which is incredibly disappointing because I even went with, uh, let's see, the Great Society stuff. I didn't do any of this stuff yet. Um, I increased R&D unity early on, but it's it's it just really sucks. It just really, really sucks that you can't get all the way down through here. I did all the things here that gave us more voters as well, but um, yeah, it, this really sucks. This, this sucks so much. We did so incredibly well just for the game to stop us, and there's no way to you know, even like just do any of this. Like, I've spent over an hour or two trying to figure out how to do this, but we can't do anything. Like, this is really just garbage. I mean, I get it, it makes sense, but still, like, there should be some sort of way to encourage people to vote for you, and stuff like that, but that's incredibly disappointing that we can't do, you know, we can't at least get enough senators, I and mean, we have, to, I literally use cons commands, and the best we can do is 44 R&Ds, that's so stupid, that's incredibly stupid, so off screen, I'm just going to go ahead and get us to the point where we will, in the next episode, use console commands to just blow through everything that we can here, because I'm not going to tolerate crap like this, that where we just can't complete the stuff, because we got so incredibly far, playing completely fairly, and just to say, have the game of the devs tell us no, no, I don't believe in that, man. I definitely don't believe in that. So, um, I'm off screen. I'm just gonna go and go through all this stuff again because I tried my best to get through here, but we just weren't able to do so, which sucks. But we'll start in the next episode, probably going down with the right to life, and then finishing both of these. But since I'm gonna do that off screen, I'm gonna go ahead and do like reach out to Rio. Uh, if you read out, like to read about that, please go right ahead. Securing your interests, uh, an unsavory bargain. Uh, wow, that does not have very much here. Uh, but you know what? Let me know in the comments below which way should we should go for the, probably the last episode or the next episode. Uh, should we do securing your interests or an unsavory bargain? Please let me know in the comments below. 
just because I'll, I'll, you know, we might as well help out these guys if possible. But like I said, that's incredibly disappointing that we just, we just can't do anything. No matter what we do, like even if we, we even got Hawaii back. For God's sakes, we even got Hawaii and the treaty ports back as LBJ, and that's still not enough, man. Come on, that's so dumb. But you know, what? I guess I'll read one more. And the 1964 military policy outlook. With the dawn of the new year, as we enter the second half of the decade, it's important that we continue to assess our military capabilities. Much of our military still hews to old doctrines based on old technologies. We have all the technological and manufacturing capacity that a superpower could ever ask for, so such old ways need to change. We should start by commissioning a new report on potential areas of improvement. In a world of new conflicts, sticking to older ideas is a full errand, but if you enjoyed the video regardless, as I've struggled greatly through off-screen trying to get this to work, which will never work for anybody, uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in the final episode for LBJ. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.